In the previous lecture, we created our first shell script and set it executable permissions. In this and next lecture, we will look at applications that allow you to view and edit files. The simplest case of viewing files is to print the content of a file straight into the terminal, which can be done using the cat command. And it will print the content of the file straight in the terminal. Cat is very useful when you want to print the content of a small file. It is also very useful in the piping operations, which we will cover in the next lectures. It isn't very suitable for larger files having hundreds of thousands of lines, as probably we would just want to see one particular line of the file. For this, we can use another utility, called less. And we can see the content of the file printed in the viewer window. We can press Q to quit. There isn't much we can do in this small file. Let us find a larger file. For this, we can go to the directory slash etc on our file system. This directory contains configuration files of the operating system. Let's print the content of it. As we can see, files in the directory are owned by a special user called root. It is the administrator user that has highest privileges. If you want to make changes to system configuration files, you need to be logged in as the root user. But for now, we only want to view these files and we have the read permissions for them. I would now like to see the files with extension .conf. I can use wildcards for the ls command here. I will choose file sysctl.conf, which seems large enough for us. If it doesn't exist for you, you can pick any file that is bigger than a few kilobytes. I will now open the file using the last viewer, and I will use top auto completion feature to complete the line, as we learned in the previous lecture. I can now see the file, and it actually doesn't fit into one screen. Now there are two ways to navigate in the file. The straightforward way is to use keyboard navigation keys like up and down, page up and page down. I can go one line forward using the down arrow key. And I can go one line backward using the up arrow key. I can also go one screen forward using page down, and one screen backwards using page up. I can go to the end of the file using end, and as well as the beginning of it using home. There are also native shortcuts of the last application. We go one line forward with J, and one line back with K. One page forward with Ctrl F, one page back with Ctrl B, and many more options to navigate. Most common shortcuts are listed in the cheat sheet, don't forget to check it out. Most probably, if you open a large file, you are only interested in specific lines, such as arrow lines or specific configuration output. Less would now help us to find the text we are looking for. We can search in the file by pressing slash. We will now search for text net. It highlighted all the occurrences of the text on the screen now. And we could search for the next occurrence of the word by pressing N. And it will bring us to the next occurrence. And I could go back in the search using Shift N. We can also search backwards from the current location by pressing question mark. And I want to search for the text kernel. And it did find it for us. Now I will start searching for net. And if I want to cancel the search, I can press Ctrl C and it will bring us back to the main viewer window. After we are finished with looking at the file, we can quit by pressing Q. We can also go to a specific line in the file by executing less with additional arguments plus 10. There is an older alternative of the less application called more. You may sometimes step across it in older systems. It has a less flexible variety of options for navigation, especially for navigation backward. Go one page forward with space, one page back with B, one line down with enter, and Q to quit. We looked at file viewers that allow for navigation, but in some cases we might only be interested in the first or last lines of the file, and we can achieve this using utilities head and tail.
It will print the first 10 lines of the file. We can change the default settings for the number of lines by adding a minus "-n argument". I will use the history feature of the terminal and edit my previous command. It will print the first 20 lines. To print the last lines, we can use command called tail. And with the same argument minus "-n", we can change the number of lines that are printed. The tail command will be very handy when we want to analyze large files, such as data reports or compilation logs. For example, of the compilation logs, errors are usually reported in the last lines of the file, and we can easily see it by printing last 10 or maybe 100 lines of the file. Also, both utilities head and tail are very useful when we want to analyze large files using piping. We will cover this in the following lectures. This concludes our lecture about file viewing, and the next lecture will be dedicated to file editing.